finished up with her, I'd show you the store and uh, look at all the tools. Now these are the glyptic I always talk about. And uh, you can see you can get a handle, like this handle here, is made for that size and that size of loops. And uh, you can buy a handle for whatever they sell it for. I think, I'm not sure what the handle sells for, but it doesn't matter. You get a whole bag of loops for $11. That's like getting, that's like getting four tools at 20 bucks a piece for about 20 bucks, which is not bad. And the same with these here. Now they got different size loops, of course, like these here, which go in different size handles, like that handle right there. <coughs> different tools for different clays. Um, some of these would work really well with ceramic clay and stuff like that. And then she sells the handles separately. And if one of your uh, wire tools breaks, or one of your wire loops break, which I doubt it will, uh, she'll replace it uh, for a couple of dollars. And then of course she has all these wire ended tools over here as well. And then she's got all these metal tools uh, that are just extremely uh, useful for when you're working in wax or plaster or whatever. Now these tools are made by a gentleman over in Pakistan and he makes them out of stainless steel. And uh, she has them individually wrapped as well. And she's got all these tools here. It's, it, you know, you, you can go to a website and uh, you can look at in the book in the website and then you have to search by category and stuff like that that's why i thought i'd show you real quick like some of the nice uh, tools that she's got available here she, these are rubber tipped tools which are really handy and then uh, her husband makes these uh, sculpting stands which are just dynamite sculpting stands. Of course she's got uh, calipers and calipers are the probably the one tool that every sculptor has to have. These are for pointing up or increasing the size of something. And then she's got the aluminum wire and connectors to make armatures. Yeah, she probably crushed that around the uh, aluminum wire. But she's got all kinds of different sizes of wire and spools of different wire, aluminum wire. Of course, she's got the uh, uh, true form armatures uh, she sells here. There's the large horse and there's the smaller horse that she sells. And, uh, of course, she sells all these, uh, the 36 inch, the 24, the 18, and the 12 inch, uh, true form armatures. And she sells other armatures as well, aluminum wire armatures. But here's all these other supplies, uh, epoxy sculpt. And, uh, some of you people who do epoxies and stuff like that, you'll recognize these things. Um, here's something that I saw yesterday, if I can find it again. Oh, here it is. This is uh, plastic uh, gloves or liquid gloves that you put on your hand and it forms a kind of a plastic covering. And then, of course, wax for uh, polishing your uh, bronzes and whatever else you use it for. And uh, some kind of mold material, need a mold. And then big rubber bands for uh, wrapping around the molds. And knives, knife blades. Um, I'm not sure what these are used for.
Oh, those are uh, T's that you put in your rubber mold to make sure that it's the sides line up. And this I just saw today, and I just wish I'd have known these. These are rasps that you can shape foam with. Just dynamite. And here's one with a handle on it so you're not cutting your hand with the, uh, the rasp. And then she's got all kinds of uh, resin stuff here. And uh, this is what I'm going to be working with on that uh, small mold. This is a rubber mold that uh, somebody made. And just pour out these little resins. And here's a mold here. You can see it, it's a little bird mold. So it's really an incredible store for uh, supplies, and it's, it's no painting supplies, just sculpting supplies. And you've got mold release, you've got uh, all, every, every item that you possibly imagine for mold making and uh, sculpting. But I just thought you'd like to see this. I, Every time I walk through here, I discover something that I didn't see before, like uh, this little mixer that you put on your drill to uh, stir uh, epoxy or whatever else you want to stir up. Anyway, she's going to show me how to pour a resin, but uh, I'll wait till she's ready for that, and I'll be back. And you can't use that for resin? You can. You can use that for resin, however you have to put a release in it, silicone release. Oh, I see. Okay. So it is doable, but the method I'm going to do with the very simple metal powder, it works great with a silicone mold. Okay. Very easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to get this way so I don't get your mouth behind it. Okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Now these are. Uh, uh, this is a sil one piece comes directly silicone out. Silicone mold, yeah. yeah. Wow, that looks that you know that looks like stone. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We can do all kinds of different finishes. All right. Um, different metals, patina, additives, and no seam lines, no chasing. Yeah. Small stuff like that, but. All right, what's the first step we do? Okay. Or do you want to get started now or later? Um, let's pause and I'll get stuff ready. Now, these are hollow resins. I don't know how she does that. I think she, she uh, rolls it around in the mold. And see, this is a solid one. Same thing. This is a hollow one as well. So you don't have to make a solid resin. You can make a hollow wet resin. Now, in here, in the back room, she's also got all these different clays that you can, when you come to the store, you can feel them and, and see which ones you like. Wow, I, I like this clay. This is this is a good clay. This is uh, by uh, Shavat. This clay here, this is really nice clay right here. But anyway, what what they have is samples of different clays. And then they've got the supplies of clays right here. Yeah. This is Karen Richardson, and she's the founder and president of uh, Sculpture Depot. And she's going to lower herself to do some common, ordinary pouring. That's what I love to do. Okay, that's Easy Flow 60, I'll urethane let... resin from Polytech. We use just Little cheap Dixie cups. What is it, one to one? One to one. If you're doing real small stuff, you want to measure it uh, or weigh it. It's yeah. 90 to 100 for small stuff. But. This is her scientific way of measuring. I just eyeball it. <laughs> Once you put the lids back on, you want to mark them. 
What? I'll make sure that people, you know that. A, you, a and B, because if you put the, they'll, they'll cap it. They'll, uh, oh, okay. Mark the lids before you use it. Okay, so I should have started. I'm going to show how we use um, a pigment. Hold on. Let me come over and take a look at it. It's just a um, metallic pigment. Down, down inside there is a metallic pigment she's putting in to her mold. And this is a very cheap and easy way to get colors on your casting. So I should have done this first. And see these other bags here are pigment too. So with a silicone mold you can do this, not with urethane, but silicone. The silicone has some oils, so the pigment sticks just like uh, you're flowering a cake pan. Mm -hmm. So now I've got. Let me uh, get close to that. I can keep pounding. Okay. I want to make sure I get it up around all the edges. And this is where gloves are nice. Okay. Now I saw that liquid glove. Can that work out well for this? Or? Um. Yeah. It, it will. The stuff will wash off, but. I'm messy, so I wear gloves. So then you just make sure that you tap out the excess. Okay. So we're going to have a, a lion head that color. Okay. And our little cameo is going to be copper. All right, I'm going to let her do the coloring, and then I'll come back. Yeah, we're just going to pour... He's mixing the two uh, parts of the liquid, resin. One is amber and one is clear. You want to mix it till you don't see any amber swirls. You have a two and a half minute pot life. And when the cup starts getting warm, you better be pouring. This that's, is, that's like mixing foam. So this is kind of a fast one and I kind of pour over the stick, pops the bubbles, uh -huh. don't drink too much coffee, <laughs> you didn't use a stick for that one, I didn't, okay, I got a little little too much on that, but it'll be all right, because actually what I'm going to do is just pour it off. There we go. Pouring uh, the remainder into that mold because she's got a little bit left. Oh, look, perfect. Fill that one just right. Just perfect. Wow. And then we get the actual color of the resin to see what that looks like. All right, we'll come back. How long is this going to take? Less than five minutes. Okay. She just barely poured that, and it's already setting. And this one too. I asked her how long. She's about five minutes, and it's already doing it. That one's already done. Yeah, that one's already done. Wow. It's exothermic, so in the center it gets hotter. Yeah. And sets faster, and then the edges take a little longer. So we won't pull that one out for a little while. Right. This one. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying She's demolding it now. Well, that's just the, the excess, right? That's the flashing, what we call. Yeah. Oh, that's my silver. Where I didn't get it. That's where I didn't get enough color. Oh, okay. I see. But, yeah, it took whatever color that I put in. Yeah. I'll take a look at that. Oh, it's not hot now. No, that one's cool. It's smaller. That's really cool. She just didn't get the powder. Completely covering the mold. Right. So if I use a clear resin with a brown dye, yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell, yeah. too. But this is our little lion head. I our... always thought you put the coloring in the resin. Oh. Wow. See, and I missed the eye there. Probably put it as a bubble, but, oh, peeled it off right there. Now, I can go in with some wax and this powder yeah. and put that on there as well. But it took the color of the powder. Yeah, that's amazing. And then. And it went yeah. through the whole damn thing. Well, actually, it kind of came up to the back. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And now I have now I have a beautiful mold too. <laughs>
Yeah. And this one, the little angel. So this, this is an opportunity for some of you that want to do yeah. something to cast in resin. And let me tell you something, that's just absolutely perfect. And that's just a straight resin without anything else. And it looks like a little carving mm -hmm. in marble. You could paint it. Um, we, can metal, yeah. we could metal powder, a uh, lot of things. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Very quick, very easy. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. She just took a look at me and uh, can't stop laughing. This is a resin. Go ahead and tell me about it, Karen. Um, the artist that does these does um, water-based clay, bronzes, and the resins, and paints these. And this is a piece that you really can't do in bronze and get the same effect. And sells so many of them. It's just incredible. Wow. Now show me this other one. Okay. In this piece. Um, show, show how it's hollow. Valentina Korokov, Russian artist. Um, Lightweight, very, very durable, very durable. Resin. Resin, Easy Flow 120. So this is a good example too that it's not just for small stuff. We actually can do these in life size pieces and put them together. Now, do you cast these things on, uh, by commission here? In other words, somebody can say, have a mold made of something, and then you you do the casting. Um, Brian used to. Okay, so you don't do it anymore. We don't do it anymore. But, but it's so easy to do. And there's a market for that, for somebody yeah. to do that, because yeah. uh, a lot of people would like to have So that. if anybody out there wants to start a business of uh, pouring for other artists. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and there are a few businesses um, down south in other areas, that, and, and that's what people do for a living. All right, well, that's going to be it from Sculpture Depot today. I'm going to be.